Hi, Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, can you hear me okay? Yes, how about me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Perfect. I anticipate we will have some people start trickling in. Here we go. Right, everyone, we are going to give everyone just a couple of minutes. I see people coming in. We'll give everyone just a couple of minutes and then we'll get started. I will leave the audio silent until we get started. Okay, good morning, everyone. We are about four minutes after the hour. We will go ahead and get started, and as others are able to join, we will allow them to do so. Um, I am sharing my screen here, so please go ahead and place a note to us in the chat if for some reason you're unable to hear and or unable to see the screen presentation. In other words, I am going to go ahead, advance our slide, and we are gonna get started. Okay, um, quick agenda for our webinar session today. We're going to get started with a brief introduction session followed by a presentation of Sage Intax Release 3 2024 highlights. I am then going to provide a live demonstration of a few of the featured new release highlights. And we will wrap up our webinar today with an exciting presentation of the Martis budgeting and planning software solution. Okay, um, I first wanna welcome everyone and I appreciate the participation in today's webinar um, where we are going to be talking about Sage Intact 2024 Release 3 Overview. My name is Heather Broberg and I lead the Accounting Technology Services Department here at GRF CPAs and Advisors. GRF CPAs and Advisors is based in Bethesda, Maryland. We serve clients in the DMV as well as nationally and internationally. GRF serves a wide range of clients covering not-for-profits, for-profits, schools,
government contractors and others. However, our niche is within the NFP and INGO space. We've been in operation for several decades. And in 2021, we celebrated our 40th anniversary. Today, we have a very special treat for you, which I mentioned a few moments ago. We're joined by Joseph Plague, Christopher Grady, and Rita Strauss from Martis Solutions. Martis is a cloud-based budgeting, forecasting, and reporting software that integrates seamlessly with Sage Intact. So be sure to stay on the call for the second portion of this presentation, as Joseph will provide a demonstration of some of the wonderful features of the Martis software. Also want to note as we get started that this webinar is not intended for financial or legal advice, simply for educational purposes only. We have a lot of exciting content to cover today, so without further ado, we will just jump right in. We are going to kick off with our Sage Intact Release 3 2024 highlights. And the first module that we are going to talk about today is the company and administration. Sage has made enhancements in the R3 2024 release to email delivery within the company module. Users now have the ability to use their company's domain and potentially subdomains to send emails from Sage Intact. What this means is that there's going to be an increase in deliverability of emails and decrease the likelihood that emails sent from uh, Sage would be blocked by your recipients, caught up in spam or others. So this is very exciting. And then a second enhancement made in the company and administration modules is to the user creation process. So for those that are current Sage Intact users, You'll probably recall that previously, the user creation process allowed for two steps. It has now been adjusted down to one. The process previously, when you create a new user, would be to create the user and save the user before being able to add a role to that user. But as you can see here on my screen, the role assignment now lives on the user information page, which means we can add a role at the time that we create a user making things much more efficient and, and much faster. Sage also deployed updates within the general ledger module. This allows for fiscal year rollover for document sequencing. Previously, document sequencing would need to be manually updated at the end of each fiscal year if the sequencing was specific to that fiscal year. With this enhancement, the document sequencing can be automatically updated to reflect the current fiscal year. This allows users to have sequencing that is fiscal year specific. The fiscal year can also show a prefix or suffix, meaning we can, for example, put fiscal year 2024 at the beginning or ending of our document sequencing. We can create these at the shared top level within Sage Intact they can also be legal entity specific. This document sequencing enhancement is available for contract numbering, fixed assets, and for general ledger numbering as well. Okay, moving right along into accounts payable, there were several enhancements made to the accounts payable module. The first of which is the ability to unapply credits in posted payments. This enhancement actually came from the Intact community ideas. So for those that are current Sage Intact users, you are probably aware that there's an Intact intranet and within there, you're able to submit ideas as Intact users. There were, was an idea for this um, functionality. It was then liked by lots and lots of users and then Intact decided to deploy it. So that is um, fantastic to know that Intact is listening to its user base. This um, unapplied credits means that once a payment is posted, right here from the po posted payment screen, there is going to be an unapply credits option. Previously, your option to unapply credits could only be done if you were to go into the bank register. So this enhancement allows for credits, from advances, debit memos, negative bills, negative line items to be easily unapplied right from the posted payment. As you can see here on my screen, this is an illustration of a posted payment. 
the new tab that has been created for credit supplied, and you can unapply directly from the posted payment screen. Go ahead and advance my slide so that you can see this just a little bit further. Um, this is again another posted payment screen illustration here. A second enhancement, again, also an idea from an intact user was to be able to void payments directly from the posted payments page. Here you can see that this allows you from the posted payments page to click on void, void the payment, and not have to go to the bank register in a separate module in order to facilitate the void. So this is exciting. And for those that are intact users, I'm sure you are super excited to see that this functionality is now deployed. Okay, all right. Another exciting enhancement in accounts payable is AP bill automation. This was actually generally released to, to the Sage Intact um, user base back in late 2023. I wanted to share this with you today for a couple of reasons. Um, I have found that there are many current clients and prospective clients that are still unaware that Sage has this functionality. There is also some additional enhancements from a purchasing stand front that I'm gonna share with you in a moment. So we're gonna go back over this AP bill automation so that everyone is aware of, of what it does. Um, if you see here on my screen, this is an add-on feature to accounts payable. It is intended to streamline your data entry process. Intact provides a dedicated accounts payable email address by legal entity within the system. This allows for vendors and or internal users to email invoices to that email address and Intact will then automatically create a draft bill from the uploaded or emailed bill document. Once you have created the draft bill, Intact then leverages AI-powered digitization to extract the details from the related PDF and populate the draft invoice. In addition to that, just as with all AI functionality, Intact will begin to learn and remember those same vendor transactions and over time should be able to fully populate those invoices without much human interaction. The one thing AP Automation does not do is populate tax details. So for those on the webinar today that have sales tax and or other taxes being assessed on vendor invoice, the AI is not able to read those. It is something a user would add um, before posting that bill. Okay. I briefly mentioned this a moment ago, so I wanted to make sure that, that we go over this and it's, it's very new to everyone and I am extremely excited to share this new enhancement to purchasing. Previously, the AP bill automation functionality that I was just describing was only available within the accounts payable module, and it was not compatible with purchasing transactions. Part of the release 3 2024, Sage deployed AI automated transaction matching within purchasing transactions. So you can see here on my workflow, the, we have the ability to email or upload invoices into Sage Intax purchasing module, and then the AI power digitization is going to do the reading of that PDF. It's going to code the vendor, GL details, dimensions on the invoice. And then in addition to that, if there is a related purchase order in Sage Intact that is referenced on the vendor invoice, the AI will capture that PO number and it will match it to the PO subsequently converting the PO. That um, allows for you to have a one-step process for PO conversion that's triggered by AI when the invoice is coded. Now, this also allows for the creation of exception and duplicate identification. The AI functionality will look at exceptions. It will call those out for you. It will identify duplicate invoices um, to ensure data, uh, data integrity. One of the other things that I wanted to mention is that this functionality is currently in beta testing, meaning it has not been deployed to the general client base. However, there is an early adopter program. You can see down here at the bottom of my screen that I am going to um, share with you guys later. There is a link 
apply to become an early adopter. So for those on the call that are Sage and Tax clients today, you are leveraging purchasing and you have APAI automation or would like to begin to leverage it, you can request to become an early adopter of the PO automated transaction matching functionality. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and push forward here. One other purchasing update that I wanted to make sure to share with you all today is that source document information um, and originating document information is now available on purchasing transactions. Previously, users could see the source document. So you can see here on my screen capture, I am sharing here a line item from a vendor invoice within our purchasing module. The source document ID is listed over here on the left, and it is showing that this actual line from this vendor invoice came from a receiving document. In addition to that, it also shows you that the originating document for the entire workflow was this purchase order. So very seamlessly from any purchasing transaction, a user has the ability to drill in and view all related purchasing transactions, okay. which is super exciting. Right, moving right in uh, to accounts receivable. There was one primary enhancement release within the accounts receiv receivable module, and this was discount customization. Previous to this release, when the discount amount did not match exactly to the discount calculated by Sage Intact, users would need to enter either a debit or credit memo in accounts receivable, and then apply that to the invoice to offset the remaining balance. This new enhancement and functionality that was just released allows users to adjust the amount of the discount at the time of receiving the payment. This feature allows users to more easily handle several challenges, one being where the remittance includes a rounding error, the client pays off by a few cents, the customer missed the grace period, and they took the discount anyway, customer took a smaller or larger discount than they should have, or there may have been multiple payments sent in for a single invoice. Now at the time of receiving the payments, you can override the discount that's being calculated. This is only available to clients that are not subscribed to the taxes module within Sage Intact. Okay, want to take a few minutes to talk about the enhancements that were deployed to the time and expense functionality in Sage Intact per the, the R3 release. So for those of you that have employees creating and submitting timesheets and expense reports, I think you're gonna be excited about the enhancements that Sage has made to the time and expense functionality. If you're not familiar with Sage Intelligent Time, this is an add-on module that provides AI-powered timesheets within Sage Intact. The Sage Intelligent Time module provides a personal AI time assistant that assistant gathers data by user and assists them in preparing their timesheet data, saving them time, and of course, increasing accuracy and efficiency. Additionally, with Sage Intelligent Time, there are activity titles and descriptions that can be automatically created, leveraging the AI assistant. Therefore, they don't have to spend an incumbent amount of time creating their descriptions for each of their time entries. This functionality is currently in beta testing and is not yet generally released. In addition, this provides enhancements to the release and provides enhancements to the approvals layout to enhance the user experience, which I'm gonna give you an illustration of on my next slide. Intact also deployed an option for users to recall their own timesheets. And um, for those of you using timesheets today, previously a user would need to await their timesheet approver to decline their timesheet so that it would then revert back to them. They could then make the necessary changes and resubmit their timesheet. 
Now they can just go ahead and recall their timesheet prior to approval. There is also an audit trail available on timesheets within Sage Intelligent Time. And then even more exciting, expense autom automation is now in beta testing. So this has been a very awaited feature coming from Sage Intact. There is an early adopter program, just as with the PO matching functionality for those clients that are interested. So be sure to let me know, post this call, if this is something you are interested in learning more about. Early adopter program um, is open at this point and you can apply for it. The functionality for the expense automation allows users to email their expense receipts directly into Sage Intact. Sage then leverages AI, just as with the AP automation functionality, to read the expense receipts, extract all of the related details to be included on the employee's expense report. And then all of the images, of course, that were then emailed in will then be saved to all the lines of their expense reports. You can see here in this first screenshot I mentioned, I would show you an illustration of the new timesheet approval screen. For those that have seen timesheet approval screens before, you will be able to see the differences here in the interface. Um, the second screenshot shows the recall option that is now available to users on their timesheets to recall prior to approvals. So these are some significant enhancements within the time and expense functionality in this release. Go ahead and move forward. With each quarterly release, Sage Intact makes updates to the user interface to enhance the user experience. One of the most impactful updates from this current release was to list views. We use list views in Intact to view lists of records, transactions, search for data, create quick reports that are easily exported. These list enhancements um, as you can see here on my screen, include the creation of advanced filters that manage data more seamlessly, easily add and remove columns from views, the ability to split screen to see details while you're in a list view, and then perform layered sorts. These features are not available for all lists, at this time, but they are available for the core module lists. Future um, enhancements, future releases are going to deploy this functionality to the remaining list views over the coming um, releases. The screenshot here that you see illustrates the advanced filtering options that are now available on the vendor list view. For example, if you're a current Sage Intact client and want to leverage this functionality, you will want to go into your list view and at the top of your screen, there is going to be a button that says, turn on list beta interface. You turn that on, your view will look like what you see in my screenshot. We are going to see a demonstration of this functionality coming up during the demonstration portion of this webinar, which I will show you how to find that button. Okay. okay. All right. Now that we've reviewed all of the key release three 2024 features, I wanna take a few minutes, as I mentioned, to provide a live demonstration within Sage Intact of some of the featured highlights. So I am going to go ahead and open up Sage Intact on my screen here, sharing my Sage Intact demo environment. And we are gonna walk through some of those key features. Me just a moment and move this out of the way. Okay. Uh, give me just one moment. Wanted to quickly show you the features that we're going to demonstrate before we hop in. We're going to go over some of the features and enhancements in accounts payable, the unapplied credits that I mentioned, voiding a payment directly from the posted payments page. We're gonna to touch on the AP automation so that for the users that have not yet seen that, you can get a feel for what that is. We will not be able to look at the PO matching. It's not been released for us to demo that as of yet. 
We're also going to take um, a look at the user interface updates, the split screen within list views, the way that the list view advanced filters are now working, and then taking a look at how we can add and remove columns from list views. Okay. All right. I'm going to take this up one more time. We are going to pop over here to the demo environment. I'm first going to go into our accounts payable posted payments. As I mentioned earlier, we now have the ability to unapply credits in posted payments. And as I showed on the screenshot earlier, there is now an unapply. For any payments that have credits applied to them, you would have an unapply option. Can quickly click on unapply. Put in the date that you want to unapply this credit. Hit submit, and that is going to unapply our credit. You can see here, now there are no credits applied, and it is back to zero. So very quick and easy. The second enhancement here in the posted payment screen was voiding a payment. We now have a void option. For those on the call that are new to Sage Intact, I will tell you that previously there was not a void button here. This void button lived only within cash management in the bank register. So in order to void a posted payment, you would have to go into a separate module, locate the transaction within the bank register and click void from there. Intact has now deployed the ability for you to void the payment directly from this screen. So very much like the unapply, we we'll just click on void. You can put in your date here. Scroll down, hit submit, and that is going to quickly void your payment. You can see here now, I have a negative 5,000 voided um, payment. Okay. As promised, I want to take a moment to show you the AI functionality in AP. Going to pop over to another sales demo environment where I've empowered the AI functionality. I am displaying here on my screen the bills list view. Now there are two ways that we can get invoices into Sage Intact to allow the AI to read and code those invoices. We can either email them to the dedicated email address that would be provided to your company, or you can upload them directly. So if you happen to just have them so saved on your local computer, you can upload them if that is easier. I am going to click here so that you can see my email. This email displayed here is the email address provided by Sage for my company for vendors or myself to send in emails of invoices. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. That is then going to populate here momentarily. You can see on my screen that I have already emailed myself two other invoices. When those invoices are emailed in, they come into Sage as drafted invoices. The other way that you could also bring these invoices in is to, of course, click on upload. When you click on upload, you're then going to browse for your file, grab your invoice, and hit create bill. I'm going to go ahead and click refresh so we can see the impact of what I'm doing here. Okay, perfect. Right now, you can see at the very top, of my list is a bill that is incoming. It is a bill upload. It is the one that I just uploaded. It happens a little faster than email. And it is in the state of analyzing. Sage Intact is now reviewing, leveraging the AI functionality to read the PDF, code all the elements of that bill, and then it will save it here once it's done for our review. I had actually already posted this bill. So you can see this exact same bill I had brought in. So in the essence of time, I'm gonna go ahead and view the one that was already completed. You can see here it was done through a bill upload. It is in draft state. I'm gonna go ahead and click edit. So we can see what Sage Intact has done. Now, mind you, I uploaded the bill directly. I didn't code any information in here. Sage did everything that you see here on my screen for me. There are still some components that it did not do which again, it's AI powered, so it will become more efficient over time in remembering the same invoices, same vendors and data so that it's able to code more and more information over time. In this case, it was able to capture the date, 
the vendor, the bill number, the due date of the invoice. It is also saved an attachment here. If I click on this, I can see my attachment. Saved an attachment here of my invoice. It was not able, let me go ahead and close this. It was not able to determine the GL account, which that is fine. Once I code this as the AP individual, I can go in, grab my GL account that's appropriate. The next time I have a bill from the same vendor, Sage is going to begin to memorize what that was. It was also able to capture the location and details from the line items that were on this invoice. After this is all done, if I have a submission for approval process, I can go ahead and hit submit. Let me go ahead and put the rest of my account details here. Can go ahead and hit submit. And then we will actually just draft this so it can save, skip all of the population of the rest of the data. We can hit submit or we can draft and then that invoice will move to the next step. Here at the very top, you can see one that's already posted, meaning it was able to fill out all of the information. And then we can also see the one that just came in is now in draft mode. So that is the way that the AI functionality works. Some of the great things about this is that you have visibility to all of your incoming invoices. So those that are managing your accounts payable process can see that the invoices have come in. They're not phishing them out of email boxes or um, from faxes or other means of getting the invoices. They all come in here. They can then return to this screen, see the AI coding that's been completed, populate anything that's remaining and go ahead and post them. As noted, the PO matching functionality works very similar to this. Um, I don't have the ability to demo it, but I'll just talk to it again for a moment just as a brief refresher. The functionality works identical. There is an upload button. There is an email address. The only difference is that it would come into the purchasing module. So if we go to purchasing, it would be coming into the vendor invoice that lives here in the purchasing module. Same capacity, the AI functionality is going to read, code those invoices. But in addition to that, it is going to extract PO details in an effort to match this vendor invoice to the previously created PO that the vendor has referenced on their invoice. It will then convert and do three-way matching for you. Right, I am going to go over to this screen here. The next thing I wanted to demonstrate for you is the user interface updates. I am sharing here on my screen the vendors list view. This is one of the views that the enhancements have been deployed to. And I know that because over here to the right, I have the turn on list beta interface button. So again, for those that are current Sage Intact clients that want to start leveraging this, you can go ahead, open up your view, and then click on turn on the list space beta interface. Intact will go ahead and turn that on. Now you can see I have a very different looking user interface. There is a turn off beta here. So if for whatever reason you feel like you wanna revert back, you can revert back. You can also send in feedback. There's feedback available because this is still in beta testing, although available for use. Within this, there's several enhancements to functionality. One of them is the split screen to see details while in list view. So if I wanna see details, on this vendor while I'm in this view, I'll select the vendor and then up here, I can click on my split screen. This is now going to open me a split screen with my vendor details. I can continue to toggle down this list and see the vendor details. This is of course much quicker than previous where you would have to drill into the vendor to get to these details. If I'm then done looking at this view, I can come here and say, take me back to list view, and it will take me back to my list view. There are also some other enhanced functionalities within here. There are advanced filtering. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the beta just momentarily for reference. Filtering options previously existed here. 
within these filter headers at the top of my list view. I can type information into here, but that's all I can do. If I wanted to do any other filtering, I would need to go up and click on advanced filters, find the column, and then find the filtering option that I would like to leverage and apply that. With the enhancement to the list views that are of course here in our beta view, I can filter still via each one of these headers, but I also have a specific filter to each header. So I can click on the filter and I can quickly say contains. So this is much faster and much more efficient. You also have the ability to edit and make changes here. You can configure and sort your columns very quickly. So for those that were that are current intact clients and you have spent time customizing list views, you know that there is a wizard that walks you through several steps in order to create a custom view. And that is where you can sort for your columns. Now you have the ability to do it right here. You can say configure columns and you can go add in the columns that you would like to add in, take the ones out that you would like to add, take out, so on and so forth. You, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. You also have the ability to edit records and view records right from the right hand side. So multiple things that we can do here very quickly. Okay. All right, I am going to reshare our slide deck. And I'm gonna go ahead and advance the slide here. We've covered all of the newly released Q3 2024 features from Sage Intact. So I wanna go ahead and move on to the second portion of our presentation, which is the presentation of the Martis budgeting and planning software. As previously mentioned, Martis is a cloud-based budgeting, forecasting, and reporting software. It integrates seamlessly with Sage Intact. This is especially relevant now with budgeting season for 2025 upon us. For those of you that are looking to explore a new budgeting software option, this may be for you. So without further ado, please allow me to welcome Joseph Plague from Martis, who will be presenting on the Martis software. Thank you, Heather. I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Please. All right. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of Martis over the next uh, 20 minutes and uh, make sure you have a few minutes to get to your next meeting as well. So give you a little bit of an overview here. We have several different areas in Martis um, for budgeting, forecasting and reporting. This dashboard area, we'll take a few minutes here and take a look at that. Uh, it's where we have some quick budget versus actual reports to track variance as you move through the year or to use as reference when you are creating maybe some new budgets or forecasts. Our planner section is uh, really the meat of Martis. It's where we are creating budgets and those new forecasts as you move through the year. Uh, there's also options for multi-year forecasting and what if scenario planning also. Uh, there's a nice personnel budgeting module where um, this uh, personnel scenarios feed into your planner budget. You can have multiple scenarios on personnel and figure out which one you'd like to use uh, for your budget. So we'll take a look at that. And then also um, one thing to keep in mind um, as we're going through this is I'm an admin user. And so what that means is we're going to have access to see and do everything in Martis. Um, but there could be other users that engage inside of Martis for creating budgets and you want them to see a departmental uh, reports just for their area of responsibility. Um, you have the ability to um, limit their permissions on their user setup. And so as a quick example, before we see really what Martis is about, user permissions, uh, you can limit them based on the functions they need to perform inside of Martis. Someone like Ed here, if he logs in, he is not going to get personnel budgeting to see all those details or certain other features. And then furthermore, under dimensions, I have three dimensions configured. I'm actually connected to a Sage Intact demo environment. I have three configured. We can have up to eight inside of Martis. I have location, department, and a project dimension. And as it relates to user permissions, someone like Ed here, he's only going to see this 100 location. Furthermore, when he's in that location, he can only see a couple of these different departments. Okay, so you can restrict users by any dimension 
inside of Mardis. All right, so let me come back over here to walk you through first a little bit about the uh, dashboard area. We're gonna have some pre-configured reports and visualizations as you see on the screen now. Um, these are out of the box, uh, but very flexible uh, as well as how you might want to view the data on the screen. So I've popped this over here now to the income statement. And the flexibility comes in not just with your filters, you can slice and dice the data using your different dimensional filters, very similar to Sage Intact, uh, but you can also quickly modify rows and columns. So these are reports that are easily consumable uh, by users of all sorts. Right now I've got my rows in the account view, which is why I have just a flat listing of counts on the rows. Um, and my columns are set to current month and year to date. So as a quick example or two here, if I want to do an account category view and get a little more summarized version of the accounts, I can do like that. You could also put dimensions on rows and I'll load that. So just kind of pivoting this table, I'm seeing current month and year to date by department. So that can be with any of your dimensions. If I go back to the account view and I say, let's look at it by months. You're gonna see uh, blue all throughout Mardis. Uh, you can drill into the budget, see those underlying details. You can also drill into the actuals here. So where you see blue, that's gonna be drillable. And part of the integration with Sage Intact is if uh, we drill into like office supplies here, we can see the uh, transaction detail. It makes a live API call out to Intact to pull in that transaction detail. So if there's any attachments on like an AP bill, journal entry, or credit card transaction, we can get that in Mardis as well. And if you're using the third party uh, for AP processing or you know credit cards, expenses, things like that, uh, we will be able to maybe link you out to that. If it's like a bill.com, there's a link they put there in Intact. We can read that link and then link you out to bill.com in that case. All right, I mentioned the columns as well. I flipped it to months. We were previously on current month and year to date. I could also do other uh, time periods as you see there or put it in a dimensional view. And I can mix and match dimensions on rows and columns if I wanted to. So that's very flexible. Now, if you get certain views you like, you can save reports. And then next time it's just a click of a button without having to put in these different uh, modifications on the views. Now we've just been on the income statement there. There are other reports pre-configured, ready to use out of the box. And keep in mind, if someone has been restricted on their user, the data that they're seeing on these reports will be limited to those dimension restrictions. All right, there is a quick report builder. We're not gonna go into all, the, all those details right now, but if you wanna get more customized reports, you could also have that in Mardis. Part of the integration with Sage Intact, we have a nightly sync where we bring in updates to your dimensions as well as your chart of accounts. So if you add a new account or something that will sync over to Mardis nightly automatically. There is an on-demand sync as you notice here as well, where I can sync that anytime if I'd like to. Actuals also sync nightly. But if you want to go back, maybe some auditors came in and they made some adjusting entries uh, to the end of last year, uh, we can come here and sync those anytime you'd like to as well. All right, let me move to our planner section. This is, uh, like I said before, the meat of Mardis. This is where we're building budgets, creating new forecasts. I want to talk to you about how we build budgets in Mardis. So to get that going, I'm showing you a consolidated view of a budget that's being worked on here in my demo environment. So 2023 budget, my current year for demo purposes is 2022. So think of this as I'm working on my next year's budget. Mardis is a very collaborative environment. So as you have multiple people working on a budget, everybody's gonna be working on the same version, same platform. And based upon their permissions, um, they'll be in certain budget worksheets to create those budgets. So I drilled into office supplies on the budget side now. This is showing us a listing of budget worksheets where someone's budgeted some office supplies. And the point here is as users are working on their different budgets based on their permissions, Mardis will take everyone's work from all of these areas and consolidate that in real time into one overall budget. So if you've been in spreadsheets before, you know the manual consolidation process and worrying about if cells have been broken and formulas and things like that, uh, that goes away in Mardis and everybody's work is coming together in real time, and then you can see the effects there on the bottom line of the budget. Now, there will be some other pre-configured reports on the budget side, if you wanna do analysis compared to other um, uh, trailing 12 months, annualized numbers, last year's budget, you can do that. There's side-by-side -side comparisons if you have other iterations or want to compare to you know, prior year budgets or forecasts, you can do that as well. 
But let me talk about the worksheets because this is gonna be the typical user experience here. And before I edit one of these and go in there, I wanna show you over here the status. So most of these are open. They're still being worked on by somebody. Uh, and you'll see over here, the owners and approvers. So what's gonna happen is when someone finishes their budget worksheet, it's gonna send an email to the approver and you can have different levels of approvers as you see there. Uh, and then they get an email, they come into Martis and review the worksheets and then can leave any comments back to that user if they approve it or deny it. So in this case, I would have sent it back to Diana, let her make some updates and then she re resubmits it. All right, so let's go into one of these worksheets show you how we create a budget for this specific location and department. And just so you're aware, there are different ways to configure dimensions. Notice I've got a dimension on my budget lines down below the project dimension. You might have that something different, or you might need a separate worksheet by project, right? That's all part of configuration set up in Martis. So what are we seeing here? At the top of our screen uh, for this budget area, I'm showing some reference data. And the design with the reference data here, this other points of reference, is to give this user um, some assistance when they're creating their next year's budget. Or again, maybe it's a new reforecasted version of this year. So in reference right now, I'm giving my current year actuals here in blue, which again, you can drill into the transaction detail, and then budget for the last few months because we're not done with the current year. Now, if you don't want them seeing certain accounts like salaries or other personnel accounts, or even drilling in, those are settings and permissions as well. Now, how do they do this? Uh, you're going to see these budget lines down below. If I need to add some more lines, I can do that. The accounts would be coming from Sage Intac through the integration. And then when I get lines on here, I can do something what we call initialize. This is one option to get it going. When we initialize a budget worksheet, I can take my current year actuals. But because we're not through with the current year just yet, we're going to take budget for the last few months. We're going to apply those to the same months as noted there. Now I can do an adjustment on that. If I leave it at 100%, I basically just copied down this reference section as a starting point for next year's budget for this area. Now I can also click into a budget line. You'll see it's easy to tab through and enter some amounts like that as well. But really the most common way for users to create their budgets is using this budget widget. So this calculator icon is gonna give them some quick adjustment types. And by the way, you're gonna see little blue question marks all throughout Martis. On screen help, there's a knowledge base with uh, tutorial videos and other guides. But let me give you a couple of examples here. So if we need a budget, let's say a weekly amount of office supplies for this area, I can type in $100. We'll preview that and you'll see it makes a weekly spread. Five weeks in January, four in February, and it applies that weekly spread for the 12 months. I can do bi-weekly spreads, monthly, quarterly, or annual. So if it's an annual amount, so it's $10,000. Notice it makes, it annualizes that, 833 a month. There's other adjustments that we're not gonna go into all the details right now, but one of the ones I do like to show here is the copy existing values. This is nice because there could be certain budget lines where you wanna capture seasonality. So if I wanna look at the trailing 12 months, these are the actuals that have synced in from Intact for this budget line in this area. Maybe next year we should decrease uh, certain expenses. This would be a great one to do that in. We'll preview that. So I've decreased by 10% or I've taken 90% of the trailing 12. You'll see that became 1331 and so forth based upon what it was on, those, on the trailing 12 months. I wanna put notes in here. So that we're gonna say we decreased by 10% based on the trailing 12 months. So I'll copy that note down. What's nice about this is, especially for approvals, or if I'm seeing variances as we go through the year, we can review the notes, how we uh, got to those numbers in the first place, right? Those underlying assumptions. And I can still make other adjustments or add some more notes here. Let's go ahead and save that budget line. And you're gonna see back in the worksheet, it gets updated here. That icon turns blue, which tells us there are notes on the budget line. And as I hover over, I can see those notes. Now, there's other features. If you want to itemize budget lines, you can certainly do that through what we call special purpose worksheets. You can create other calculations and formulas for some driver-based planning, whether it's expense related or you know, related to revenue. Uh, special purpose worksheets are a great option for that. Now, when I'm all finished with the worksheet here, I'm gonna maybe upload a couple supporting documents for um, this area. 
And then I'm going to hit submit and lock. That's when it locks this worksheet down. It sends an email to whoever that approver or approvers is. And they're going to come into the worksheet, see it just like we see it here. It'll be locked down to prevent changes, though, as it goes to the approvals. Now, all that work, bring this full circle here, is now consolidated into the overall budget. So if we were to filter for that department, you'll see here on the screen that there's the work that we just did in that area. So it's already consolidated it into the overall budget. All right, moving on then to the personnel piece with our remaining time. I guess there's many other features that we could show in a separate demo, but I wanna show you the personnel piece and you'll notice I have multiple scenarios here. Just like you can have different versions or scenarios of a budget, you can do the same on the personnel side. So it is position-based budgeting. Each scenario has positions. You can copy a scenario and use that as a basis for a new one, do some adjustments in the new scenario. Uh, these positions, they can be tied to employees. They could be vacant positions, or you could even pool positions. And what I mean by a pooled position is instead of having maybe seven counselors listed like you see there, I could have one counselor position that represented seven FTEs if I didn't want to track those employee by employee. Now we're tracking a few different things on these positions. Uh, there's that pool option, FTE, start and end dates. So if it's left blank like this, we're telling Martis to budget all 12 months for this position. But if you have seasonal employees or someone you might not be looking to hire until mid-year, you can enter dates so it only calculates for those periods. Down below are the dimensions. So this is telling Martis where this position needs to post to in the budget. And then we have pay types. And pay types are all the different ways that you would compensate employees. Pay, benefits, taxes, and other items. So those are things that would get set up as you uh, get implemented. And just to give you a listing of some other options, you know, there could be overtime, different types of bonuses, health insurance, and even some of these like health insurance, you might wanna build in tiers. So coverage tiers, for instance, with insurance, whether you got default rates that you might be paying on behalf of the, uh, the employees. So taxes, benefits, things like that, stipends, uh, can all be added as pay types. Those get added then to positions. And I'm going to go ahead and view the detail here. This is going to give us a breakdown for this position for each pay type. We'll see the monthly amounts as noted there, and then the total compensation fully loaded for that position. Now, if you were in a different scenario, you wanted to make some adjustments, you can do so by using this updated pay items feature. And there's options for there's options for um, uh, certain months to make those updates to, or based on someone's anniversary date. You can do flat amount adjustments or percentage increases or decreases. You can do it for one position at a time, or you could do it for all positions with a certain pay type or pay types. So there's options around that. We also have an allocations feature uh, for personnel. You can do allocations in the overall budget as well but there's a specific call out here for allocations on personnel. So if someone needs to be split between different dimensions, uh, you can do that. And I'm gonna show you the result over here under the allocation analysis. We were looking at DAISY before. So this would be DAISY's fully loaded compensation that would hit the budget at those dimensions without any allocations. But if we need to allocate DAISY, we'll pull in the allocation that was created, load that, and you can see we split her across different departments as well as different projects the annual breakdown of how it hit the budget for each of those areas, and the monthly breakdown as well. And you can control if certain things should be adjusted as you move through the year. For instance, here, there's no more allocation happening to this department and project. When you do have a scenario complete, I'm gonna to come to the summary tab, and you're gonna see here, this is how it would post back to the budget in summary by account, and then the different dimensions, the worksheets that we were in before. In other words, all the, um, pay type detail, employee names, and so forth, that's going to stay in personnel budgeting, which is a permission-based area. So those who have access to this can see it, but no one else. Now, when we want to post this to the budget, you'll come here. You'll select which budget or new forecast you might want to post that to, and then click that orange button. Now, Martis also does have a cash flow forecasting feature where we can provide projected uh, statements of cash flow and projected balance sheets. 
uh, that is part of one of our other subscription tiers as well. So I left a few minutes uh, at the end here um, and turn it back over to Heather. And uh, if you have any other questions regarding Martis, uh, I would refer to GRF and Heather and their team. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. Just quickly share my screen back just to wrap us up here. Um, I took a look at the Q&A. Um, I answered a couple of Q&A questions that were in there. Currently, I do not see any others at this time. So I will presume that there are no other questions. I am sharing my contact information on the screen here for anyone who would like to reach out um, regarding anything we went over today, Martis software, Sage Intact updates, or anything else. Please feel free to reach out to me. We thank all of you for attending today's discussion. And um, please be sure to visit our website for upcoming events and alerts. We will continue to hold these events quarterly. Um, thank you all again and have a fantastic day. Thanks, everyone.